There's so much seaweed out here. I think I'm gonna go forward and put a little chafe for protection on the uh, that preventer line where it touches the shrouds. Whoa. The, the color of the water is so nice. It's like a deep hyper blue. my position on the chart. I think we did pretty good. Two, three. Only that much further to go. This little shade makes all the difference in the world. Normally I would never want to be laying out here in the middle of the day, but escaping from that sun. It only really covers the middle, so it's easy to peek and look at the top of the sail. Birds have started circling the boat. I believe it's a uh, Atlantic long-tailed white bird. I heard them chirping for a while, and I thought I was going crazy because I was like, "Where's that chirping come from?" But they are there. They there, it's not in my head. Not going crazy just yet. Chirp, 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 chirp. Is he gonna do it? No, oh, not that time. I think the uh, hatches are ready to close. Yeah, definitely. Close these hatches. I don't think any water has gotten in here yet, though. It's coming. The temperature has been sitting there at around 80 degrees during the day. I was surprised it's this this warm out here. I would think like on the ocean it would have been cooler, but I guess not. So the wind vane was having a little trouble steering. Uh, kind of off the wind so I, I dropped the mainsail and it's doing better of course without the mainsail we become a lot more rolly that made me a little bit nauseous for some reason dealing with putting out that pole and sorting everything out uh, so I'm gonna just lay down for a second and then maybe I'll deal with some of these projects set the uh, AIS alarm. There we go. That'll let us know if there's a ship uh, that's going to be on a collision course nearby. All right, day four. Uh, covered some pretty good ground last night. There's some pretty ominous looking clouds over kind of coming towards us. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that and maybe drop the sails. And get... right, I think we're getting away from those currents, which is good. And I pulled the jib away, the head sails put away. We then started picking up, started to drizzle a little bit. And I think we're gonna get the bulk of it. I also put a little rain cover out, but I think I'm gonna go down below. I'm just gonna wait it out down there. And the boat should take care of herself. Not a huge increase. We are doing four knots under our fourth reef, but I, I don't, I'm not using the first or third reef, so it's really my second reef. I'm not sure what you call it. I'll call it fourth reef. I have it just above the spreaders. I'm um, starting to see a little bit of light through the other side up there. But down here, like nothing's going on i've definitely been in a lot worse we had these this level of squall all the time crossing the pacific um 
and they're not bad. The ones in that I ran into in Florida were just awful. Just lost another uh, sail slide lash in, so I just temporarily tied it on there with some some string. Squall took our wind. Somehow we are still moving, just sails are quite obnoxious at the moment. Such good weather. Couldn't help but go for a ride up on the front of the boat. Cooking some tuna and rice. A very rocky boat. been on the same t tack this entire trip. Um, I have had to adjust the course a little bit as the wind changes, but it's only by like 45, 90 degrees-ish. And man, the stars are amazing out there. I wish I could photograph them with my phone. Um, they just don't show up on the moving boat, unfortunately. Uh, it's really bright. You can see satellites and uh, they're even like lighting up the clouds and everything. There's no moon right now. It's really cool. You can just see, all you can see is like the little bit of the navigation lights in the boat. Man, it's amazing. It's one of my favorite things sailing at night, especially far from shore. And speaking of far from shore, we're about 250 miles from shore. So I'm pretty comfortable sleeping all night. And uh, I haven't had the AIS alarm for ship warnings go off, um, except since yesterday. And I'm only seeing maybe, maybe two or three ships a day right now. Um, so I think we're fine. All right, I'm kind of lazy, just laying around, so I'm gonna try to start working on cleaning up this glue off the floor. Made some more progress on the floor today. We got a lot of the, the adhesive out, still have to do that side, but the bulk of it was right under here. Um, it's a little bit nicer to walk on. Eventually I need to get a new carpet or uh, some covering for it. But I was just so tired of looking at it like that, that I had to do something and give me something to do anyway. Finally tackling these wires and getting them all zip tied together so they can, I can access this stuff without having to tangle through wires. And I'm going to have the uh, wire cover on there. I downloaded my grips for the day. Grips are weather files, by the way. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. It's confirming there's a low pressure system kind of swooping from the west. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to go right above Bermuda, but it brings some pretty strong winds, probably looking like a 30 knots of wind uh, Saturday, which is when I'm supposed to get in there. And uh, I mean, I, I, I would be fine just running right into Bermuda with it, but um, I'm worried about having to navigate my way around uh, underneath like the reefs or whatever islands and then uh, go back into the channel. And uh, possibly it would be fine if I was more familiar with Bermuda, maybe I'd do it, but I'm worried I'm just gonna have to, to, to attack my way up into the channel or something. But I think I found a solution, it's just gonna go, um, I'm gonna aim for 100, 120 miles south of Bermuda. And that should uh, give the, the, the low pressure system a little bit of a wider berth in case it decides to do something else I'm not expecting. And then uh, that would put me in great position to just uh, run downwind or heave to until I drift right into, uh, into Bermuda, uh, so mon Sunday, maybe Monday, after this is all kind of cleared up. And it would only add an extra day or two to my to my arrival time, and I'm completely prepared to, to be out here for, for for quite a while with food and water and entertainment, so it's no big no big deal. I'm making uh, some sausage and peppers and tomatoes, but then I had, I guess I that bag of tomatoes went bad, and then the onion and potatoes are too, so. I was really looking forward to having some potatoes with this, but I guess I'm not anymore. One of the biggest no, biggest annoyances I've been having is this darn wind vane uh, paddle in the water. It keeps collecting uh, seaweed on it. Probably every 10, 10 minutes it gets a, a new piece of seaweed on there, and then after a while it builds up to be such a big blob that 
it just stops working. I have to like um, swing the paddle out of the water. Luckily, it's it's not too hard to do, but I have to disconnect it from the rudder. So I either put it on the uh, electric autopilot or just try to do it real quick before the boat goes off course, which does not take long in this boat. For lunch today, I'm gonna try potatoes all gratin. And uh, I haven't tried this in the on the boat yet, so this will be a new experiment. I think I might be getting close to the Sargasso Sea now, um, because just the giant, giant clumps. I mean, you can see little ones here and there, but there's some huge ones that are like 100 feet wide. I've heard some stories about this, uh, being there being just like an area where it gets to be so thick you can't even move through it, and it will just tangle up your boat. Hopefully I don't go through that area. I, I didn't do much research on that before I left. Um, I thought maybe it's because I'm going south beneath Bermuda. Maybe that's where it kind of the edge of it is. Or I don't know. I, I thought it was more further east, like out kind of off Africa. There's a big one. Hopefully this doesn't become my fate. Oh, look, plastic bottle cap. <clears throat> Boat's gone off course again. That always always means Sargosa weed on the wind vane. I finally got tired of clearing off the seaweed off the wind vane and river to this guy. So I get to listen to this. I get to listen to this noise all day. I might go read on the front of the boat. Actually get away from it. Uh, sweet Italian sausage with just uh, bell pepper. It really hits the spot. <clears throat> I had a bunch of other stuff. I usually put onions and tomatoes and potatoes in there, but, but all my fruit kind of, I think the potatoes or something went bad and all the fruit got all rotten pretty quickly. So all I have is the bell peppers left and it's just as good and it's way easier. I'm even gonna treat myself to a beer today. First beer for the trip. That's the city. Been another great day out here on the water. I think day number five, maybe. We're looking at, I think, day six now. Uh, waves have picked up quite a bit. This morning I've been reading um, this Lynn and Larry party book. A bunch of people have always recommended them. Uh, it's actually quite a good book. I feel like I, I'm very aligned with a lot of their ideas. Um, not everything, but uh, a lot of people ask me a lot of questions about getting into sailing and what boats to go with. I think this is a pretty good, uh, this would kind of provide a lot of the answers that I would agree with. Up, it's the self-sufficient sailor. I know they have a whole series of them. It's a lot more experienced than me, that's for sure. Uh, so yeah, check it out if you're getting into sailing. to a very calm motion. We're just slowly drifting backwards. Now it's gonna guess probably going about a knot and a half, but as the wind picks up, I think it will we'll probably increase about two knots. Okay, we have about uh, maybe 15 knots of wind. Let's see what the check the scale. Let's say I'm a little closer to 20. Eight to 18 maybe? No, 15 to 20. Crazy now. Six. 
seeing lots of flying fish out there today. Haven't had any land in the boat, surprisingly. Started picking up some speed here, kind of surfing down these waves. They're definitely building. Definitely building in size. Uh, just got, uh, I was laying down in the vent, I got splashed with a uh, bunch of water. I, I think it came in through the, uh, my, my hatch up here, which is surprising because the Dodger is over there. Uh, this part was leaking at one point, but it seemed to come in through underneath underneath here. So the water I got through the Dodger, which isn't very, completely watertight for sure, but must have been a pretty big wave. I think we're about uh, 25 miles from land, but I know, can't see it yet. A lot of cloud cover. I put out my country flag and the Q flag, kind of the Q flag, that's the yellow flag, quarantine flag. Preparation to uh, come into the uh, harbor and uh, quarantine. I think I'm gonna have to get a COVID test, it sounds like. Uh, I'm gonna call up the ra them on the radio. Bermuda Harbor Radio, Bermuda Harbor Radio. This is Pickled Herring, Channel 27, Pickled Herring 27. Pickled Herring, Pickled Herring, this is Bermuda Radio. Good morning, go ahead. Good morning, sir. I'm a 28 foot sailing yacht arriving from the US. I'm about 30 miles out, just calling to notify of my arrival and uh, check what the procedures were for checking in. Yeah, Pickled Herring, Bermuda Radio, all copied. I'll just need to take some pre arrival details. So we're doing like six or seven knots with just that little bit of sail out is all. I could probably bear pulled and do almost, a, and probably do four knots where bear pulled. I'm trying to get in around uh, uh, 1500 or 1600. Oh, I spotted Bermuda. It's about 10 miles on my uh, port bow. So I'm a few hours out. Uh, I just I just ran the motor um, because I wanted to make sure it was. Uh, you know, working good before I got close to the channel or tried to turn it on. Um, and it, I think the alternator is loose again, which is weird. I'm gonna, let's take a look. Yeah, it's definitely, that's so weird. I just, I tightened it really good, I thought. Uh, apparently not tight enough though. So, let me uh, get out the wrenches. This will be fun to do as the boat is is rocking around. Right, let's get this. You can see everything has uh, is black because of, uh... okay, whatever. AIS, it's going off crazy. I gotta turn the alarm off. Go away, AIS. Yeah. All right, so let's loosen this guy. Oh, that's pretty tight. All right, I think we're back in business. Let's put the cover on this and uh, start thinking about this approach we're gonna do. Winds have let up just a little bit, and the waves have also died down a little too. Um, and that was great because it gave me a chance to put the to put a little bit more sail area up on the main. I had my my, my deepest reef in, and it, I want to have more sail up in case I do need to tack into the channel, just in case. And we're doing seven to eight knots with that, so I think that works just fine. See see land over there. going around the end there. What a beautiful place. Going into Town Cut. The water is such a nice color. Little beach over there. This is 
the first foreign country I've sailed into. Uh, so this will be an interesting experience. I'm excited. All right, we just docked at the uh, customs dock over here. Uh, kind of stressful this much wind. Let's uh, go see what it takes to check in in Bermuda. Apparently in Bermuda you can't have a flare gun with a trigger, so they, they have to hold on to it before, until I leave, I guess. So I'm all squared away with customs now, but before I push off the dock, I'm gonna put the big anchor up on the front of my boat because I need to go anchor out here. It's really windy out there. All right, so the big anchor is in here, I think. Yep. Still a little out of the way. Put this guy together. So this just fits together. All right, we're off the customs dock. I gotta go find a spot in this anchorage. This looks somewhat crowded. So I'm in uh, 17 feet of water, and I was really lucky I got the spot right in the middle of the anchorage. So that gives me the most room to, to drag anyway, and I can spin all around. I have a lot of room around me. I'm surprised that no one was here with all the boats. Someone must have just left, I bet. And I put out 120 feet of, uh, of chain and rope. So I think that should be that should hold pretty good. See, I think I think it's sand. It looks like sand. It's very the water is very uh, that kind of blue that is over easily sitting over sand or something bright. Well, I'm somewhat disappointed that for some reason I thought Bermuda was was completely open without when with you had a a COVID vaccine. But I guess I still have to get a COVID test tomorrow and then wait for the result before I can go ashore. And unfortunately, I was only gonna plan to be here like three days, so I, I gotta wait one day, what, to get my test, and then another day to get the result, and then uh, I guess I could explore the, the island for a little bit and then leave. Um, unless the weather's bad, then maybe I'll stay longer. But then if the, but then I have to get another COVID test every like three days or something. Uh, that's kind of frustrating. Uh, I got vac vaccinated. Like, what else? What else do you want from me? You know. Whatever. I'm gonna make a uh, vodka tonic, and then uh, that'll make me feel better. Thanks for watching. Uh, in the next episode, I'll get my negative COVID test, and we get to explore some really cool uh, snorkeling spots and some forts around Bermuda. And then the following episode is going to be uh, the passage to the Azores, which I'm actually sailing on right now. Um, I gotta give a huge thanks to everybody who's contributed, you know, time, material, and money. Uh, you guys are what's able to make, allow me to do this full time. I get to do what I love and share these videos with y'all. Um, and I'm just happy that lots of people are uh, interested in watching them and subscribing. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.